Hello everyone, this is Jeet and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight on Railcraft. Today we're going to be covering version 6.7 of Railcraft in a four part series that's going to cover everything from basic machines to carts to tracks to steam engines and beyond, as well as practical uses for all of these in your Minecraft world. Today's episode, we're going to go ahead and take a look at all the various machines and devices that will actually help you get started on your way to creating all these cool things, as well as we're going to look at some steam engines and some uses for those. So let's get started right now with the Coke oven. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get started in Railcraft uh, in your Minecraft career is go ahead and start collecting some resources that is needed for making Coke ovens. Uh, you're going to need quite a few of these in your world just because of the fact that it takes a very long time to produce the resources needed for creating rails and stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you're going to need to create these Coke oven bricks. And it's very basic recipes, things that you can get quite easily. Bricks, of course, you're going to need to collect some clay and then bake those into bricks. Uh, and then put them in a pattern like so to create coke oven bricks. Now you're going to need 26 coke oven bricks to create a coke oven. Now you can see a completed one here, and I'm just going to go ahead and build another one out for you. So we can see what it looks like being built. So this is a pretty cool pattern, and I'm making it too big. See? See? You try and be prepared for these things. So anyways, what you do is make it a 3x3x3 three by three by three with the middle of the coke oven hollowed out. And I'm going to move down here. And if I place this last brick, you're going to see that this middle block is going to change to look like it has a window. And if you open it up, you see the interface here. And what you put in is coal into this slot here. Uh, and then it will produce coal coke and creosote oil. Now creosote oil is going to be made for using a lot of the uh, the tracks for making the rail beds and stuff for the tracks as well as a fuel source for steam engines which we'll get into later. Byproduct of this will also be coal coke which also can be used as a uh, substitute for coal and it's actually twice as powerful as coal so you can use these in any of the build craft engines, your furnaces, or anything that will would require uh, coal as a fuel source. Now to get creosote oil out of these containers you can actually take a can and right click on the coal coke oven and you can get a creosote can. Alternatively you can put the can inside the uh, coke oven itself or several cans and it'll produce creosote that way. You can pipe these in using build craft to fill up the cans automatically or you can actually pipe the liquid out of here using build craft and liquid pipes. We're not going to show that right now because it's fairly straightforward but we'll get into that a little bit later. Next item we're going to take a look at is the rolling machine. The rolling machine is going to create a bunch of the resources that you're going to need for your railcraft career. Uh, we're not going to get into a whole bunch of that today, but suffice to say that you will need this to create rails. So let's go ahead and look at the recipe for the rolling machine. You're going to need several pistons, some iron, and a crafting table, and that's going to produce your rolling machine. Again, like I said, the rolling machine is used to create rails, and I just have a standard recipe for rails for you right now. And But if you notice here, there's an interface on the right that requires power. Yes, if you do have uh, Billcraft installed, and I believe you actually even if Railcraft's installed, you do need power to power these things. Right now I'm just using these Sterling engines from uh, Billcraft. But if you power this machine, and I'm going to do so now, uh, you'll notice that the interface goes and it's getting power. And you'll see the progress bar go. Once this progress bar fills all the way up, your item will be deposited in this output slot here. and you get your rails. A uh, feature to note here, if I can uh, do so without uh, too much trouble, if it is the last item in the inventory, or the last set of items in the inventory, it actually acts kind of like an automatic crafting table in the sense that it'll try and leave that, leave that uh, recipe in the crafting table for you to use later. But if you do want to take it out, you can go ahead and just click on here and it'll start crafting it for you and then you can just remove it from that crafting table so let's go ahead and move on to the next item here next item is going to be the blast furnace 
and I've already built one out here for us to look at, but uh, the blast furnace is going to be used for creating steel, which we'll also be needing in this episode because we're going to create a few items using steel. Uh, this will require a trip to the nether because you're going to have to cre uh, collect some soul sand, some nether bricks, and some magma cream. And you're going to get your flas uh, blast furnace bricks. Uh, also, there is a decorative block for those that like the look of the, uh, the blast furnace uh, brick, uh, brick look. He create, uh, Cover Jaguar created Infernal Bricks, which is basically just soul sand and nether brick, and it's a non-functional uh, It's a non-functional brick. It's just a decorative block. Um, if, for whatever reason, that you uh, want to have these devices as uh, decorations in your house, it's advised that you don't leave them incomplete because the game does check every once in a while to see if the device is completed. And it could create some lag. So, again, if you're going to be using this for a decorative type thing, use the infernal brick instead of the blast furnace bricks. So, anyways, let's go ahead and complete this here. And it's basically the same as the coal coke oven, except it's a 3 by 4 So, you're going to get four high, and the middle two blocks are going to be hollow. As soon as you place the last brick, you'll see a window open up down here at the bottom, and we can check out the inventory here. So, we can see that uh, the blast furnace will take iron and coal coke, and then it'll start producing steel. I'm going to go ahead and click over to this one here. And you see we have steel produced. Now, I believe it takes about two pieces of cold coke to produce one iron ingot. Although I could be wrong. I think I filled this up all the way. So just so you know, it does, it does take quite a while to produce this. So this is something else you might want to produce in quantity if you want to start producing reels quickly. So the next item that we're going to move on to is something that will uh, you're going to need later on in your career for containing liquids. So we're going to go ahead and look at some of the items for this. Uh, using the rolling machine, you put nine iron and you get an iron plate. Okay. Some of the thing else, you, some of the other things you're going to need, you need to go ahead and make four of those iron plates into an iron tank wall. You're also going to need an iron tank gauge which is used with glass panes and some more iron plates. So you're using quite a bit of iron for this. And the last one here is the iron tank valve, which needs some iron bars, a lever, and some more iron plates. And what that's going to create for us are these iron tanks. And these were liquid storage tanks. And this can hold just about any liquid that the that uh, is currently in forge. Uh, currently, I have this one incomplete. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this device. And you can see that the windows went from solid blocks to a... Uh, or I'm sorry, individual blocks to kind of like a uh, a completed block area. And this allows us to know that this is a, a valid uh, inventory for liquids, as well as right-clicking this to see if there is uh, inventory space available. Now, with the iron tanks, you can uh, do kind of the same with the creosote uh, oil here. You can actually, except for you're putting liquids into it, so if I take uh, liquids and put it right here, you see that I have my creosote emptying out into the tank. You can also, if you need to, uh, right click on the tank itself with your liquid and put liquid in the tank that way. Or you can right click on with an empty can and take liquid out. And again, you can also put empty cans in the, the iron tank and it will fill them up for you. So we're going to go ahead and put those back in there. Uh, if you notice back here, I have a Coke oven going here. And it's got plenty of creosote oil and such in here. But I also have it set up to some waterproof pipes. So you can pump liquids in as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that button. That switch there. And we're going to start pumping liquids out of the cold coke oven into the iron tank. And if you uh, hover over the tank indicator here, you can see that I have liquids being pumped in. Over here to the right, you see I have a much larger tank. You can actually make these tanks quite, quite large. You can actually have it be uh, a simple 3x3 type tank here, 5x5 uh, five five or 7x7. Seven seven. Height, I believe you can go up to nine, 8 blocks high. But if you notice here on the back, I have this uh, valve pipe is actually what's created or what's needed to be able to pump liquids into and out of. If you place one of these on the top, you can actually stack these tanks higher and higher at the max height limit. So you can go eight blocks high, put a valve uh, 
what is this uh, iron uh, iron tank valve at the top and actually continue to stack these tanks as high as you want them. But this is a just a use very useful liquid storage. I mean, this one here is storing quite a bit of liquid, almost five, over five million units of water. Uh, each bucket of water, I believe, is a thousand units. So just so you are aware of that. Uh, and you see here, I'm also using the tank valve to pump liquid out into this steam engine. Now, this isn't doing anything particular right now. I just have it hooked up to a rolling machine, but you can see what it does uh, or how it would work to pump liquids out. So the next item we're going to look at is the water uh, water tank. Now, the water tank is created by some oak wood planks. Uh, I'm sorry, some planks, iron ingots, and slime ball, and it creates uh, water tank sidings. And you put craft this into the same type of uh, shape as the cold coke oven, so a 3x3 three three with hollow in the middle. And what this does is it actually passively collects water for you. Uh, you can do the same here with uh, filling up water or putting water into the tank if you need to. But this automatically will store water for you as a small passive collector. So as opposed to this right here, I have an infinite water supply that's actually filling this tank up. This one will actually pull water from the air and put it into the tank. Next item that we're going to move on to is the rock crusher. And the rock crusher is a device that actually will create uh, dusts or break up items when you place it in the inventory. So let's go ahead and see how to make it real quick here. First thing we're going to need is a block of steel. And that's why we made the blast uh, furnace earlier. Uh, the block of steel is just made by producing uh, nine uh, steel ingots into a block, kind of like the iron block, some diamonds, and some pistons. That's going to create four rock crushers. Now, you actually need a total of uh, 12 rock crushers to create the device itself. If you right-click on it here, you can see that I have uh, some obsidian in the rock crusher right now, and it actually produced crushed obsidian and obsidian dust. Now, the obsidian dust is used for creating... Uh, reinforced rails, which we'll kind of get into a little bit later in the series. Now, this device can also be used as a macerator if you have an industrial craft installed. So you can actually put your ores and such in here and actually get uh, iron dust and copper dust and tin dust and such that you would normally get from industrial craft. You can also place bones and blaze rods in this device and get those crushed and macerated as well. And again, it's just a simple three by two by two uh, device uh, structure. So if I right click here and you see I just have some power going into this guy, it does require quite a bit of power to uh, actually operate, but you notice here that it's uh, generating the power here and crushing this obsidian up. And it makes a pretty cool sound when it's uh, crushing stuff as well. Now there's only, I believe, a 25% chance of creating obsidian dust when you're crushing obsidian. So you're going to have to find quite a bit of obsidian to get this obsidian dust if you want to make some reinforced rails. Again, we'll go into that a little bit later. Go ahead and go on to the next item here. Uh, the next thing we're going to get into is actually the steam engines. Now, steam engines are an interesting... Okay, you can stop now. Uh, steam engines have actually been uh, recently added, and uh, to be honest with you, it's really cool. Um, so let's go ahead and see what some of the items are for making steam engines. Now, this first item here is a fire charge, which actually is a vanilla Minecraft item. I had never known that. <laughs> I did haven't been following vanilla very much, but this has been recently added here uh, to create uh, projectiles from dispensers. So since I didn't know it was not part of uh, Railcraft, we're going to go and keep it in here for right now. But anyways, it's created using blaze powder, coal, and gunpowder to get these fire charges. Now the fire charges are used in the creation of the fireboxes, which is part of the steam engine uh, pieces. And you create a firebox using a furnace, one of those fire charges, and surround that by bricks. Now this is for solid fuel, and we'll explain what the differences are here in a moment. Uh, next item I'm just going to show you real quick here is the low pressure boiler tank and you use two iron plates to create a low pressure boiler tank. Okay, so and when we place those down, this is kind of what it looks like. We have a we have the steam boiler here which is the fuel the solid fuel fire box. And this device here will actually fire coal coke and I oh, actually got it started there. Oops. <laughs> I should go get some water, I guess, but we'll let this go for now. Uh, as soon as you put coal in there, it will start burning, so you just make sure you have liquid in there first. I don't want to put liquid in there now, because if I do, it'll blow up on me. Uh, so actually, I'm just going to go ahead and destroy this and replace it. 
There we go. So you put your, your coal or coal coke in here and it actually generates heat, but you wanna make sure that you put water in there first to make sure that it's gonna be cool enough or keeps it cool enough to not blow up. And then once it gets hot enough, it'll actually start creating the steam. And again, Covert Jaguar, being the genius that he is, has created these in such a way that you can actually make larger boilers that are more powerful. So here we have a 2x2 two two steam boiler, and it's basically the same except for it outputs more, uh, more energy. And you have your boilers here. So if I take one of these boilers, you kind of see how it looks like when you place. When you first start placing the blocks and the recipe is not completed, it actually has these spaces in between. As soon as you place the last boiler piece on, you'll know it's complete because it turns into one solid block. And you kind of see here the same thing. I have a 3x3 three three, uh, boiler. And this makes it even more powerful. It produces more energy. There you go. Now those can actually go a bit higher as well to create more energy. So right now I showed you the low pressure boiler tanks. There's actually another version of that called the high pressure boiler tanks, which we'll take a look at here in a moment. Uh, but first to create that, we're gonna have to create some new items here, which is steel plates. The high pressure boiler tank using steel plates and the liquid fueled firebox using steel plates, furnace, that fire charge, buckets, and some iron bars. And it creates another type of furnace that actually runs off liquid fuel. So things like creosote oil or buildcraft oil or fuel, those kind of items will burn in here. Now those do have different burning temperatures. I think the best being the actual buildcraft fuel that's created, but you can use biofuel, creosote oil to some effect effectiveness. So if we look in the inventory here, you see it has uh, the steam gauge here, uh, it has uh, the fuel gauge and a water gauge as well. And again, you can create various sizes for these. Now, what are these steam engine or what are these boilers used for? Well, it's used for powering the railcraft steam engines, which we'll take a look at here in a moment. Uh, for some of the steam engine stuff, we're going to have to create a few new items: gold gears, gold plated gears. And that's just gold nuggets surrounding a stone gear. And our first engine that we'll take a look at is the hobbyist steam engine, which apparently I've forgotten to put the recipe in for, but here it is. And that is created by using two of those gold plated gears, a piston, some glass, and some gold nuggets, and that creates the steam engine. We'll look at these here in a moment as I uh, to explain each one of them. So the next item we're going to look at are iron gears. Uh, now there is a different recipe if you do not have Billcraft installed, and I believe it's just a piece of stone surrounded by iron, a piece of cobblestone surrounded by iron, and you'll get a different gear for that if you do not have Billcraft installed. Right now, since it's Bill, I do have Billcraft installed with this, I get the standard Billcraft gear recipe, and that's to create the commercial or the commercial steam engine. The commercial steam engine is very uh, slightly more powerful than the hobbyist steam engine. And that's created with iron gears, iron plates, glass, and a piston, of course. And the last one is the steel gear, which is created, again, using a stone gear surrounded by steel ingots. And again, I believe the uh, non uh, buildcraft recipe is just a piece of cobblestone in the middle of the steel gears here, which gets you the industrial steam engine. You use steel plates and then the steel gears to get the industrial steam engine. So let's go ahead and look at some of these engines in use. We're going to head over here. And the first engine that we're going to take a look at here is the hobbyist steam engine. Now you notice here I have the hobbyist steam engine actually will produce uh, energy with just coal, placing coal coke and having water in the input here. And that will produce steam, enough steam to actually produce, uh, to power, for example, this rolling machine. And that produces 1.6 megajoules of power. Now the hobbyist engine can take steam directly from a boiler as well. If I see I'm the steam boiler here, I have coal coke placed in the steam boiler with water coming in, of course. And it's producing enough steam to power this hobby engine. And it actually is now producing 2.0 megajoules of power. So it produces slight, is slightly more efficient than just putting coal coke directly into the steam engine itself. The next engine we're going to look at 
is the commercial steam engine. Now the commercial steam engine is uh, even more powerful than the hobbyist engine. I have it hooked up to a more powerful boiler. I currently have this boiler stocked full of cold coke. Uh, it's already had steam and everything produced and I just have a infinite water source pumping stuff in. So if I turn this guy on, it'll start accepting the steam into the engine here. And you notice this one does not accept uh, any extra type of fuel. It's just a purely uh, a pure steam engine. And as soon as this thing gets uh, full of energy here and filled up, it'll actually produce, I believe, four megajoules of power. So you can use this to power more powerful machines. Yeah, close to four. All right, and it makes this rolling machine all nice and powerful and ready to use. The last steam engine that we're gonna look at here is gonna be the industrial steam engine. And this guy here is currently being powered by one of the three by three boilers here, producing enough power and energy to power this uh, engine, probably a couple more as well. But if we flick this guy on, I believe the maximum power output on this guy is eight megajoules. You can see the steam filling up here and it's getting up there pretty quick and energy. So it's slowly creeping to eight out of eight there. Um, and I currently have this guy here powering this rock crusher. Now the rock crusher again needs uh, more power than this would actually produce, one engine would produce. So you would wanna put like another second engine on this rock crusher because it's rather slow if you don't. And if you notice back here, I just have uh, an I ooh. Oh, that's the, st <laughs> that's the rock crusher, that's right. Had me worried, thought something blew up for a moment there. And for this one here, I just had this tank being fed by two infinite water sources just to make sure I don't blow up back here. Uh, just one final note about the steam boilers and the steam engines here before we move on. Uh, I've actually, these setups here I'm using are actually quite inefficient. Uh, for this, for example, this particular boil, boiler here could actually run four of these uh, commercial steam engines quite efficiently as long as we had a steady supply of water going into it. And for example, this one here, I could actually run, I believe, uh, let's just take a wild guess here. I could probably run at least what, four, five, maybe, uh, of these industrial steam engines right off of this boiler here. Uh, the thing is, it's more efficient to run a large boiler than many small ones. So this one here would actually be able to run a whole bunch of different uh, of my engines out and power a whole bunch of different stuff. So just keep that in mind. It's probably more efficient, or it, w it is definitely more efficient to make a large steam boiler than it is a smaller steam boiler. And it's a difference about the types of boilers here, for example, the low pressure tanks to the high pressure tanks, the low pressure tanks will produce 10 steam per tick, while the high pressure tanks will actually produce 20, 20 steam per tick. But the low pressure tanks are actually much more efficient, fuel efficient, in creating that steam. So just think about that too when you're when you're creating your, your tanks and, and what you're looking for, either fuel efficiency or power efficiency. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. All right, so the last item that we're gonna look at today is gonna to be the turbine. Now the turbine takes your excess steam energy and actually converts that into another form of power. For example, industrial craft power. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is made. First, we're gonna need 12 uh, of these turbine housings. And those are made by blocks of steel and steel plates to make a turbine housing. Uh, you will need an additional piece that is actually something that you will have to replace uh, regularly if you want to keep this type this type of energy going. So you're going to need to make a turbine uh, turbine rotor and you make a turbine rotor by making some turbine blades, some turbine discs, blades surrounding a piece of steel, and then you take four, uh, three of those discs and make a turbine rotor. And you make your your turbine by combining 12 of those turbine housings into a pattern like so. And you'll know that it's complete. You'll get these patterns on the side and on the front here, letting you know that it is a complete housing. And then if you click on it, you get your steam turbine. And this is where you put your rotor. Now the rotors will last about 40 hours of actual gameplay. So just be aware of that. Now, this thing will actually, actually requires 160 units of steam per tick. Uh, I have it hooked up to this liquid boiler here, which is uh, stacked pretty high. 
Uh, this is actually kind of overkill because this thing actually produces, uh, let's see, 90, 180, 360 energy per tick. So I could actually hook another one of these turbines up to this if I wanted to because I don't have anything else running off of it. Again, the, better, the bigger the boiler, the more efficient it is. But anyway, so I have four lines running into this thing. You do kind of need to boot each line because each uh, line will only transport uh, 40 steam units per tick. So you just have to make sure you have enough lines running into your turbine to keep it running. And what the turbine will produce is 50 units of uh, 50 EU units of energy for industrial craft. And you see it here. I have it filling up this MFSU. It also produces 50 kilowatts of universal electricity for those other mods as well. Well, guys, that's going to wrap things up this time. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to cover rails and carts and maybe a few other odds and ends that I missed today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good one.